Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you for coming on a day when we don't normally gather. Like many of you in this room, my heart um, for many, many weeks has just been incredibly heavy. We are a broken people, we're a broken nation, and we need the Lord. And like many of you in this room, as we wrestle with the news, we see pain and strife, we see it manifest in so many different ways. In moments where we don't know what else to do, I am learning the art, the biblical mandate, of first going to the Lord. And I confess to you, brothers and sisters in this room, that that is not always my first response. And I want it to be. And as several of us talked, we wanted to have a moment where we can come together and grieve, reflect, listen, and most importantly, to pray. I look out in this room and I see sisters and brothers that I love deeply. And it's a privilege to be with you and to pray today. When we talk about lament, it's a picture of brokenness. And I've needed to learn that in my own life, that it needs to start with a broken heart before the living God. And before I have any right to talk to anybody else or make any judgment on anything or to do anything or to say anything, I realize that the constant mandate of Scripture is, Mark Yarbrough, look at your own heart and start there. It's a privilege to pray with you today. Let's do that now. Lord, I thank you for those that are in this room because it means that they are here because they long to pray. And Lord, we realize it doesn't mean that ever others don't. With schedules and conflicts, we understand. But Lord, we're privileged to set aside an hour now and to pray together in that common bond of Jesus Christ. Lord, as we start here today, we realize that we're just in a mess that we are a mess, and it reminds us of how much we need our Savior. Lord, help us when tensions are high. When we have too much access at times to say things in areas and moments where we shouldn't. Lord, help us to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Lord, we desperately need you. And in the concept of lament of the psalmist of old, Lord, help us to come to you with broken hearts. Because that's where you meet us. Not when we stand in arrogance and pride. But you meet us on our knees. You meet us through tears. You meet us in moments of our life when we seem to have nothing else to do. There are no words. You meet us in those moments. That's what you long for, a broken and contrite heart. Well, Lord, if that's what you want, that's where we are. So, Lord, we commit to you in advance all of these words, scriptures that are read, songs that are sung. May we be reminded today that you are there, that you care, and that because of that, we can care for one another. We present these things in Jesus' name. 
Amen. My name is Brooks Nessie, and I'm the student council president for this academic year. And I ask that you would listen with me as I read this short passage from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3. He ground my teeth with gravel and made me cower in the dust. I've been deprived of peace. I have forgotten what prosperity is. Then I thought my future is lost as well as my hope from the Lord. Remember my affliction and my homelessness, the wormwood and the poison. I continually remember them and I have become depressed. Yet I call this to mind and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish, for his mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will put my hope in him. Father, we hurt. And sometimes we wonder how this hurt could ever result in anything good. But we do thank you that we don't have to fully comprehend what you are doing in order to trust what you are doing. And we can trust you because you have revealed to us who you are, and you are good. We are reminded in this passage that our hope is not in a change of circumstances, but our hope is in an unchanging God. And so, Lord, in that knowledge, help us to weep with those who weep. Help us to empathize as much as we can with those who are hurting Help all of us to see if perhaps we have added to that suffering through our deeds or our lack of them. Father, teach us to listen in order that we might better understand the pains and the joys of our brothers and sisters around us. Lord, we often don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Help us in the name of Jesus who suffered on our behalf and by the power of your spirit who indwells us. Amen. I would encourage you to take the next two to three minutes to bring those things that are maybe causing you to lose hope, to bring those things before the God of hope. So take those things now to the Lord for the next two to three minutes. Amen, amen, everyone. Hello, my name is Markevis Edwards, and I am the president of Black Student Fellowship for this academic year. Um, thank you all so much for coming. Um, I just ask that we all just be gracious, just gracious, so grace. <laughs> I'm learning that more and more each day. So I'm gonna read um, scripture from Romans 12, um, starting at verse nine. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, and devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, and practicing hospitality. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for these people here today. Father God, we come humbly before you, just asking for your grace and mercy. Father God, so many, so many times we're quick to respond, but we don't sit back and observe to actually hear what you have to say. So Father God, I pray that our ears and our hearts may be open to your word and your truth, dear Lord. I pray, Father God, that we may practice love. I pray for confidence and boldness in that, that I may love my brother and my sister who may not understand my pain and my grief. But I pray, Father God, that your grace may abound in my heart. 
so that I may extend it to others, dear Lord. Father God, let us be slow to, to respond. Let us be slow to respond. Let us not fall into the ways of this world, dear Lord, but as members of the body of Christ, let us come together and unite. Let us be the example of unity that we seek in this world today. For we know if we don't have it right here in the church, then we can't expect it to be right out in the world, dear Lord. So I pray that we may come together as brothers and sisters and believers. Father God, may we hold steadfast to this faith. We humbly and so fervently wait for the day of Christ's return. But may we cling to you as we wait, and may we seek your will and not our own, dear Lord. I pray for the leaders of this seminary and the students. I pray for peace and comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. So I just want to leave you all um, with this. If you could just pray that the Lord may, I guess, reveal some of those things that stir up anger within you. May he calm those so that you may be slow to respond and that you may seek love and unity, your fellow brothers and sisters. Amen. Good morning, my name is Jaina Thompson. I serve as the Director of Recruiting in the Admissions Office. Psalm 145, 18 and 19 states, the Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will also hear their cry and will save them. Please join me in prayer uh, for the body of Christ within higher education. Heavenly Father, I do praise you uh, for the reminder that you are near us. Um, you hear us and you hear the cry of our hearts. You know all that's going on with each and every one of us. You know every single specific situation, um, both globally as well as individually. And we are grateful, Lord, that you promise to be near us and you promise to deal with all that, we're, um, that we encounter. Heavenly Father, I do pray for the body of Christ right now, specifically those within higher education. Lord, I'm grateful to you for the students here at Dallas Theological Seminary and for how you are equipping them. But I also pray, Lord, for the body of Christ outside of this institution, those at other institutions as well. Lord, I pray that you will grant all of us wisdom and guidance. I pray that you will give us boldness to speak for you, Heavenly Father. I pray that you will let us be your hands and your feet in this world where comfort is so necessary. Let us see those who are hurting, let us come alongside them, and let us share the love of Christ in a way that others will want to know you as a result of the work that, we are, that we're doing, um, that you've empowered us to do. Lord, I pray that you will just encourage those who are hurting for various reasons, Lord, and that you will be glorified in all that takes place. This I pray in Jesus' mighty name and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. And please just spend a couple of minutes praying um, silently again for uh, the body of Christ, specifically those in higher ed. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jamie Hightower and I work in the media production department. The lamenting prophet Jeremiah wrote via Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, Everyone's after the dishonest dollar. Little people and big people alike. Prophets and priests. And everyone in between twist words and Dr. Truth. My people are broken. Shattered. And they put on band-aids saying, it's not so bad, you'll be just fine. But things are not just fine. Pray with me, please. God in heaven, your children, your image bearers are shattered breaking under the weight of injustice and being offered band-aids. How many times can the marginalized and oppressed hear, it's not so bad, you'll be just fine, as they experience heightened anxiety due to terror? When they see or hear of another life taken by those in power? When Christian leaders decide not to discuss certain topics, choosing the perceived unity of the church over advocating for the hurting? 
When your children are belittled, disparaged, disregarded, berated, condemned by other Christians because of race, gender, physical ability, or mental aptitude, we say, how long, O Lord, will people be expendable in the pursuit of freedom? Creator of all, you desire to see humanity treated with respect and shown dignity. You don't want your children to be merely tolerated, but celebrated as they, with their hearts, souls, minds, and bodies, give you glory and pledge their love to you. Lord God, we ask you to help us see your image, your value, and the lives of all around us. Jesus, your life is the model of sacrifice, putting what's best for your family above all else, even what others considered right or wrong. Surely your disciples thought you would lead them into victory over Rome, but the best for your family was your crucifixion and resurrection. Teach us to live with this motivation as a foundation of our faith. What is the best way to exemplify your love to others? Lord, may we, your children, be willing to offer our physical lives instead of just giving money. Speak words of true love to those with whom we disagree and creatively find ways to dismantle the systems that survive on supremacy, power, and hierarchy, replacing them with systems of equity, grace, and integrity. May we be willing to extend grace to all, not just to some. Lord, help us not to just say, but do what is necessary to see your will done on earth. And Father, discipline and challenge us when we lose sight of your will to come back to you. You are, you are our good father, and you give us the good gift of being different through our skin color, our body type, and so many other attributes. As we create moments for the ashes to be visible on our foreheads, may we look around and see the beauty, ashes and beauty, gladness and mourning, praise and despair, the both and of the Christian life. Please take the next few moments to pray for the communities in which anger and frustration feel predominant for their health, their families, and their lived reality. I ask you to pray for hope, for justice, for real peace, and the opportunities to bring change. I'm Dr. Joy Baker, and I'm part of the faculty in our EML department. And I want to share with you some scripture from Psalm 31. Be gracious to me, O God, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted away from grief, my soul and my body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength has failed because of my iniquity and my body has wasted away. Because of all my adversaries, I have become a reproach, especially to my neighbors, and an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I'm forgotten, as though I was dead. I'm like a broken vessel, for I've heard the slander of many. Terror is on every side. While they, look, while they took counsel together against me, they schemed to take away my life. But as for me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. Save me in your loving kindness. O oh, love the Lord, all you his godly ones. The Lord preserves the faithful and fully recompenses the proud doer. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who hope in the Lord. Pray with me, please. Our gracious Heavenly Father, creator and sustainer of the world, we are thankful that you, O oh God, hear our prayers. You know the deep pain in our hearts. You know the sorrow and grief of so many. We need the tender touch of your mercy and grace. Meet us in this great time of sadness. Turn our thoughts to you. Turn our hearts to you. Listen to the praise of your people, O God, for surely you are our only real hope. We desperately need your help. 
We desperately need to be surrounded by your love and feel your sweet comfort. Hear our hearts cry, hear our prayers, and give us your peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Spend a few minutes praising and thanking God in the midst of all that's going on and ask him to give you his comfort and his peace that he so longs for us to live in. Amen. Good morning. I am Patrick Thomas, and I have the privilege of serving as our director of chapel music and worship. And I'd like to share with you a um, a verse of scripture that I go to often to um, help keep myself in line with God's word when I'm seeing uh, so many things that break my heart and make me very frustrated in my humanness. And this is um, Paul's words to the Philippian church in uh, chapter four. And I'll read verses four through nine. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Then he says this, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Join me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, your word says to rejoice in you always. And uh, that word always doesn't leave a lot of room for our reservations. It's a command here. And I know that there are plenty of times that we see things going on in the world and we know that you're sovereign. But we reserve our praise because we think we know better than you do. And right now we want to confess and ask you please to forgive us of that. And help us to rejoice in you because you are always good and that you do all things well. Forgive us for the times that we look for peace in places and in people that you didn't intend. Your word says here that our spirits must be gentle to all men. Forgive us for the times that in our desperation and desire to see change in our world, that maybe we operate in a way that doesn't suggest that you're sovereign and that you're not in control. Lord, please forgive us of that. And if we know that your word is true, help us to have behavior that lines up with your word. We recognize there are a lot of injustice in our world, a lot of things that don't go right, a lot of things that many have fought for consistently over and over again. But we know who you are, and you said that we don't need to live in anxiety. We lay those things on you because that's where our peace and security can be found. And I pray that you would find us faithful that our immediate response would be to fall on our knees and pray. I thank you for everybody that's in this room and we've come together, Lord, seeking you and praying because we see everything that's around us and how messed up it is. But help us not to miss the fact that we are messed up as well. And protect us from our own self-righteousness so we can see things from your perspective and be able to give you glory in the way that we respond and live for you on this side. We love you and we thank you for time together in prayer and it's in Jesus' name. Amen.
Um, if you could now spend just a few minutes um, examining your own heart and praying that God would help you to have a response rather than a reaction as it pertains to the things that you see in our world that brings you great pain and grief. I'm Herman Baxter, and I have the honor and the privilege to serve as your Dean of Students here at the Dallas Theological Seminary. I have a smile on my face and a heaviness in my heart because like many of you, I was looking forward to this semester to be bright, to be shiny, to be full of life. And yet we live in a fallen, broken world. We have issues on top of issues and we have hurts and pains. But hopefully you heard today the theme that our God, he reigns. Our God is sovereign. Our God doesn't know he acts. He is God. And as the psalmist cried in many psalms, he says, hear my cry, O Lord, attend unto my every prayer. Psalms 82, Lord, avenge me. Take care of the afflicted, the fatherless, and the destitute. But Paul reminds us also, guess what? That we want perfect justice, but we cannot do it. But God, he is just and the justifier. So he knows exactly what we need. And so I'm going to pray. But then I would ask that when you pray, don't stop here in this room. Continue to pray. Continue to show forth truth and loving well. Will you join me? Father, we are gracious, we are grateful, we are humbled, and we thank you for this time and for this season, because what better way for us to know that you care for us than when we call out to you, you hear and you answer. What better way for us to know that sin is rampant in this world, but you provide a way of salvation. What better way for us to know to depend upon you for all things because while we are in the midst of turmoil, you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you give us joy, you give us strength, you give us energy. Lord God, not for us to sit in the corner, but to go out into a harmful world and say there is a risen Savior today. Lord God, we just thank you for this opportunity to cry out to you because you could have turned yourself away from us, but yet and still, you came and rescued us. So Father, let us be mindful of how you are the one who is just. But through our actions and our dependence upon you and by the power of your word, we can demonstrate justice to others. Let us love one another, but our neighbors as well. You be glorified. You be magnified. This day and for eternity. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my friends. Please fellowship wisely as you exit out. Thank you. <laughs>